We will start in 30 seconds. Hi, everybody. You have a lot of paper to write down a lot of notes, like not one piece of paper, because I have eight pages of notes. So you better have a lot of paper and a pen, because I have a lot of great stuff that I'm going to share with you today. And I'm really, really excited. We are officially starting. Welcome to the 90 listings in 90 days challenge. Woo, sounds so exciting. Three steps. And before I give you the three steps, I'm gonna sort of give you a little bit of an introduction as to what to expect from this webinar today. Um, 90 listings is in 90 days is a challenge for all of you. So write that down. Three steps to the 90 listings in 90 days challenge. So what does that mean? Why do I start by saying it's a challenge? Because it's going to be hard. Taking 90 listings in 90 days is not going to be easy. So I want you to have the right expectations. And not only is it going to be hard because it is a challenge, you're going to have some doubt that you can do it. How many of you as, you, as we start this, you're thinking, oh, I'm not sure I could do that. Raise your hand, because you're all muted. I know a lot of you do have doubt. It's called normal. I can tell you though, that if you do what I laid, laying out for you here, you will get results. You will get results. Now, if you don't have thousands of dollars to spare in buying leads, because for you to take 90 listings in 90 days, uh, buying leads, you could imagine you're probably going to have to spend tens of thousands of dollars a month. Okay. Um, so if you don't have that kind of money <laughs> or you don't want to spend that kind of money, you're left with one choice to take 90 listings in 90 days. And that is, you have to talk to everyone everywhere. I'm gonna tell you exactly how to do this. Okay, so hang in there, don't, don't freak out. It, it can happen for you, but you're gonna have to talk to people. Now, in thinking about buying leads, I just wanna say this, because I know some of you may be doing that right now. I don't see any problem with spending $1 to make two. It's called <clears throat> an investment. It's totally fine. I'm muting some lines. I guess some of you, they came in late. So it's okay to spend a dollar and make $2. And buying leads, if you are able to close those leads and make a profit, it's great. Write this down. The goal of any great business is to increase revenue while keeping their costs down. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. So here are five problems that you may have buying leads. Problem number one, you don't have the money to do it. Problem number two, you may have the money, but you don't want to spend the money buying leads. Problem number three, you want to buy leads, but you don't know which ones and where to go to get them. There's so many, right? What I call shiny objects out there. You might, want, you might have the money and want to spend it, and you have no idea, like, where is the right place for you to actually buy these leads from? Here's problem number four. This is a huge problem. If you do spend the money to buy leads, you're still left with needing to handle objections because they're going to have them you're not going to you don't think for a moment that if you're buying leads you're the only one that has those leads they're talking to other agents and they're going to give you objections you're going to need to overcome those objections you need to close for an appointment you need to do a presentation before you do the presentation you need to pre-qualify and you need to be able to get a signature on a listing agreement. We're talking about listings, not buyers here. So that's problem number four. Okay, I got the leads now. How do I close them? And then here's the last one that I, I mean, there's probably a whole lot more, but these are the five that I wrote down. 
most of the leads that you will get are going to be buyer leads. You might get some listing leads, but the majority will be buyers. So when you think about taking 90 listings in 90 days, you are left with no choice but to become obsessed about telling the world, okay? I'm not even gonna call it prospecting right now. Telling the world that you are a listing expert. So I, I trust you're making notes. If you're not, uh, well, you should, because when, you, when, when you're actually listening to something or you're reading a book or an audio or a, a webinar, when you take notes as you're listening, you learn and absorb and you're going to remember all this way, way better than if you don't. So, uh, and if you don't and you want to listen to it again, you'll be on my YouTube channel within the next couple of days. So make sure you subscribe. It's Jack Kravitz. So when I say telling the world that you are a listing expert, telling as in having conversations with people, not texting, not emailing conversations with people. Working in real estate equals prospecting and prospecting equals, okay, in, my, in my world, prospecting equals looking for people who wanna sell their homes. You don't look for buyers, you're gonna find buyers. As you're looking for listings, you're gonna find buyers. You don't need to look for the buyers, they're gonna be out there. And as you take listings, these listings are also gonna bring you more buyers. So you're not gonna look for them, they're just gonna come. So working in real estate equals prospecting. Write this down. The only job of a real estate salesperson is to find people who want to sell. Everything else is a distraction and everything else should be leveraged out. One of the steps is gonna talk about that, okay? Because you're like, well, I have other things to do. Okay, we'll talk about what to do with these other things that you don't have to do. They have to be done, but you're not, you don't need to be the one to do them. I wrote this down. Your job is not what you think it is. What do some real estate agents think their job is? Doing CMAs, mm -mm, that's not your job. Previewing houses, holding open houses, showing houses to buyers. No, if you think that's your job, that is not your job. I will repeat, your only job is to find people who wanna sell. But I don't know what to say. We're gonna talk about that too. Massive action always makes up for a lack of skills. You don't know what to say? That's okay. Just massive action in talking to the entire world, your entire marketplace. Yes, in many of your areas right now, there is low inventory. And someone is taking listings. Why not you? If you're working with buyers in a hot seller's market, what properties are you showing those buyers? They're listed in the MLS with somebody. That somebody should be you. What about, well, but I don't like talking to people. Well, then I, I have great advice for you here. Go get a real job, you know, a, a real job because real estate is not a real job because you get to do whatever you want. You don't have a boss. So it really isn't a real job. But if you don't like talking to people, either you learn how to like it and you accept that for you to make a fortune in real estate, that's going to be required or just go get a job, get out of the business, go do something else. Okay. Yesterday, uh, I'm going to share this with you because I want to just open your mind to what is possible. Yesterday, I had a conversation with who I, this is my personal opinion, I consider this agent 
the single best real estate agent in this country. And he's been that for me for many years. Some of you might know or might have heard of him. His name is Froy Candelario. He sells real estate in California. So I've known him for many years. I spoke with him yesterday. And I want you to just think about these numbers because as I continue, I'm gonna give you the three steps. Rather than resisting what I'm saying to you, I just want you to open your mind. Because when you hear what this guy does, you're like, okay, well, I guess what Jackie's telling me to do is not that complicated. I could do that. That sounds easy in comparison to what Freud Candelario does. Last year, he closed 700 transactions in 2021. He listed and sold all of them no cooperating agent. I'm not going to get into details. There's some details about this, but that's okay. Just take it as I say it to you. So because he listed and sold all of them, he got a commission of six or 7%. He said sometimes 7% is either six or 7% on all of these transactions. He has five assistants. It's him plus five, that's his team, to close because we count sales sides. You know, we would think a listing is one side, the buyer is another side. I and mean, if we're going to count it like that, it really is 1,400 sides. His GCI, if you do the math, his average price is $700,000. You do the math, GCI, gross commission, $30 million. Ooh, talk about profitable. So yesterday, um, he said, he, he told me, and I already knew this, but I confirmed it because it sounds like, whoa, uh, my mind is blown. He makes 350 to 400 contacts per day, per day, not per week, per day. And he finds, and this is since day one, right? He's been in real estate for 37 years. He told me, I, we had a conversation about how to start in real estate. I'm not gonna go into any of that. What, how was it, how, what happened? From his very first week in real estate, he finds 10 to 15 people a day that wanna buy or sell. When you're talking to 400 people a day, yeah, that happens. So I asked him, what advice would you give to a brand new real estate agent that wants to be the next Freud Candelario? And he said, we were speaking Spanish. So I'll translate it for you, but first I'll say it in Spanish. He said, vete pa la calle a trabajar, a hablar con la gente. That's exactly what he said. I said, okay, um, go to the streets and go to work. Go talk to people. Because when he started, he used to door knock. Now he's on the phone. Either way, you gotta vete trabajar, like talk to people. Okay. Um, for somebody who talks to that many people a day and finds 10 to 15 people a day that wanna buy or sell, I'm sure some of you are thinking, okay, what script does he use? We're gonna talk about scripts today too. So I asked him, I said, so what do you tell people? It's, it goes like this, his script. Do you want to buy or sell? No. Okay, bye. Next. I'm like, okay, well, you know, you, you see scripts. Like he's making uh, circle prospecting calls, right? Neighborhood calls. He's not going after physicals and expires. So there's not that many. I can't talk to 400 a day like that. So he's just making phone calls to everyone. So he said, I don't have time to be asking, you know, additional questions. No, you want to buy or sell? No, okay. Next, but I want to buy or sell. Like he, he's just into talking to as many people as possible. Anyway, just a little bit of inspiration for you. No time to waste with any other questions when you're somebody like this. So here's your mission for the next 90 days. You got to let everyone you know, okay? You got to let them know this is what you're up to. You're on a mission to take 90 listings in 90 days. And you cannot waste any time or get distracted with anything. So here's step number one, your schedule. 
what is your schedule going to look like for you to take 90 listings in 90 days? Whew, it's going to start really easy. 5 to 8 a.m. Yes, you're going to be up early. 5 to 8 a.m. You are going to practice and improve your skills. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. So you got three hours here. You could be drinking some coffee while you're doing this. And you're going to spend one hour and you don't have to do the entire hour first and then you do the next thing you could like mix and match so you you, know, you don't get go nuts in your head because you know what i'm going to tell you can become repetitive one hour out of the three you're gonna read scripts out loud as fast as you can i'm going to tell you what scripts in a minute then you're going to spend one hour writing and rewriting scripts. So you could do 30 minutes of this, 30 minutes of that, then you go back to this, then you go back to that. You're going to spend one hour listening to great role plays and transcribing them word for word. And I guess you could do 50 minutes of one thing, 50 and 50, and then spend another, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, okay? You figure it out in that hour listening to your own calls that you need to record. You got to listen to yourself and critique yourself. Listen to what you're doing well and what you need to improve and how you need to improve it. And when you, the, the third thing I ask you to do is listen to great role plays and transcribe them. As you are transcribing, you're writing down word for word, you're listening to how it's being said. And then when you go listen to your own recording, wow, you go like, oh, okay, well, I heard exactly how it's supposed to be said. And I realized now that's not what I'm doing. And here's where I need to improve. It could be pausing. It could be upswings, downswings. There's so many nuances to great communication. What scripts are you going to read out loud and, and write and do all this stuff with? For sale by owner script, the expired script, circle prospecting script, neighborhood calls, objection handlers, pre-qualifying and listing presentation. That's it. These are all seller scripts. From 8 a.m. until noon. I say 8 a.m., here's a disclosure. Speak with your broker to find out what time you can start making calls. I say 8 a.m., you make sure with your broker, it's okay where you are to call whatever time he tells you, that's when you start, as early as possible. And you are going to call in order, in the order that I'm gonna give you right here, new expired listings, new are the ones that expire today. Then you're gonna call new for sale by owners. Then you're going to call a few of your past clients to have influence. How many? Take the number of people that you have in your database of past clients and sphere. All of you have a different number. Divide it by 55. And whatever that number is, that's how many you call per day. Then you're going to call old expired. So they're only new the day they expired. So an old expired expired yesterday and the day before and the day before that. And you go in chronological order backwards. And then you go to old for sale by owner. Same thing, chronological order backwards. And then circle prospecting calls or neighborhood calls. When you speak with Fizbo's expired, needless to say, you should use a script. And you should use my script because it's the best one there is where you're going to set more appointments. When you're talking to your past client and sphere of influence, write this down. Always give value, information about real estate, what's happening in real estate, what's happening in your market, market stats, mortgage rates. You got to bring something of value to these calls. You need to be known to your past client sphere as the resource for everything and anything that has to do with real estate. And I want you to think about it this way. You wouldn't make an important medical decision without consulting your doctor. 
they wouldn't make a real estate decision without consulting with you. That's who you want to be for your past client and sphere of influence. You need to speak with a minimum of 10 people per hour. A contact is defined as speaking with a decision-making adult about buying or selling real estate. 10 of those conversations per hour, minimum, absolute minimum. So if, if you're starting at 8 a.m. after you ask your broker, eight till noon is four hours, 10 contacts an hour, that's 40 contacts. Write that down, I'm giving you your schedule, this is important. I wrote down, you must use a service to get you phone numbers. You're not gonna be like, okay, there are different ways of doing this, right? I'm thinking about Fry Candelario. He doesn't call Fizbo's expired, he dials. I didn't ask him uh, this question when we spoke recently, but I know I've known him for, for many years ago. And I remember he dials in numerical order. So he, he, he gets a prefix like, Five four seven zero 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 one oh two oh three oh four like he just goes 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 and he uses three phones he doesn't use a dial like he doesn't use any machine and he still he told me yesterday that's still how he does it. You're not Freud. You're not gonna be like him. You're not gonna do what he does, right? You're inspired by what this guy has done and still does, but you're gonna use a service that you open in the morning. I recommend Espresso Agent Vulcan 7. If you want a link with a special price, you could go to salesxtreme.com, click the links tab on the header and you'll be there for you. It's a great service. It includes a dialer. It has a lead follow-up system. It gives you phone numbers for expireds, FISBOs. It gives you neighborhood phone numbers, endless resources right there for efficiency. Efficiency is key. 90 listings in 90 days require you to be very efficient. You have zero time to waste on anything, okay? From 1 to 2 p.m., okay, 12 to 1, you're going to have lunch. You get an hour lunch. 1 to 2 p.m., you're going to do your CMAs to prepare for the listing appointments that you're setting because you're setting appointments every day. That's the goal, to set an appointment a day. That's going to happen between 1 and 2 p.m. Oh, is that enough time? How many do I have to do? Listen, efficiency. you got to learn to take action, do things quickly, learn quickly, leverage, delegate what you can, and get things done fast. You don't take 90 listings and 90 days. Oh, I don't know how to do that. It takes me an hour to do a CMA. Well, you got to learn how to do it faster. 2 to 5 p.m., you're going to door knock. That's three hours, door knock, out in the streets, talking to people. Three hours, again, minimum of 10 contacts per hour. That's another 30 contacts right there. You should door knock in the areas where you have taken a listing. Now, what if you don't have a listing yet? It's like, okay, well, I don't have a listing. What area am I going to door knock? Pick one of your company's listings, or if you have a recent sale, if you're a brand new agent, just pick a listing in an area that makes sense, that there are sales happening, and go door knock. And then when you take a listing, you start door knocking around your listing. So what I just gave you, okay, this schedule right here, um, from, so 5 to 2 to 5 p.m., you're door knocking. 5 p.m. on, you're going to go on listing appointments. That's the time when you actually schedule your listing appointments. It's a great idea when you're door knocking for you to pick an area. Now, if you're taking listings all over the place, that may not be possible. But pick an area where you can door knock quarterly because people in that community, in that neighborhood, are get to, going to get to know who you are. I. My first two years in real estate, I did a ton of just listed, just sold, like these neighborhood calls, not door knocking. I did it over the phone. And it was the same area where I used to live, around and around. And I used to talk to people every two to three months. I still remember. It's amazing how people remember who you are. I, I didn't remember. You know, I'm talking to 400 people a week. I thought that was a big deal. Freud talks to 400 a day. Um, so I, 
I, I, I was talking to so many people, I didn't necessarily remember, you know, a conversation. And after a few months of going around talking to people two or three times, when I would call and say, oh, hi, this is Jackie, a real estate. Oh, hey, Jackie. Like they talked to me like they knew who I was. I'm like, I have no idea who you are, but okay, I like this. Okay, that's what I just gave you is, I call it schedule A. So I'm gonna give you schedule B and schedule B is gonna be in case you don't have appointments to go on between five and 8 p.m. Then what do you do? So if <laughs> I think you can guess what you're gonna do um, from five to eight if you're not on listing appointments, you're gonna get back on the phone and make more prospecting calls. All the expireds and FISBOs that didn't answer the phone in the morning, you're going to call them again in the evening. You're going to continue to make neighborhood calls. So schedule A gives you 70 contacts per day and at least one listing appointment gone on. Schedule B is going to give you 100 contacts per day. That is one of your goals. It's not your most important goal, but it is one of your goals, 100 contacts per day. It is absolutely critical that you stay on your schedule. You're not going to take 90 listings in 90 days, being all over the place and doing whatever you're doing now. Whatever you're doing now is getting you what you're getting now. And I know you're here because you want to take more listings. You want to make more money. You want to work more efficiently. And I want to say this. This is a challenge. It's gonna be hard, but it's gonna get easier and easier. It's gonna be harder in the beginning. You go through these first 90 days and these are working days, Monday through Friday, okay? So this is not necessarily like a three month period of time. It's 90 working days, Monday through Friday, although you're gonna put in some Saturdays. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But it's gonna get easier. The first time you do it is going to be harder. It's just like everything else. Anything that you start doing that you haven't done before, it's hard. Everything is hard before it's easy. This is the same here, okay? Now, 90 days, Monday through Friday, 500 contacts for the week. I said 100 a day times five, 500. You're going to go on 10, okay, no, sorry. You're going to set 10 listing appointments. And you're gonna go on these appointments, okay? And with a 50% closing ratio on listing appointments, assuming like you're not good at your listing presentation, you don't know what you're doing. Okay, so out of 500, you're gonna set 10 appointments, you're gonna go on these appointments and you're gonna list half of them. That's five per week. That's cool. Okay, all of your buyer leads must be referred. I know some of you are like, oh no, don't tell me that. Yes, you got to refer all buyer leads. You're not going to be able to. <laughs> I was talking, there was a client we were doing. We had a live call earlier today before this webinar. And she was saying, yeah, I've been prospecting and I'm getting leads. And I, I got some seller leads and I got some buyer leads. I'm like, you do not go on and start showing properties to these buyers because that's going to get you totally off your prospecting schedule, which is what got you the seller leads and buyer leads to begin with. Then she got three buyer leads and some seller leads too. I think three as well. You spend the next 30 days showing properties to these buyers. You stop prospecting and then there's low inventory, multiple offers. They don't buy anything and you just wasted an entire month. You are referring them out or you can hire a buyer's agent. Should be on a 50-50 split. We're going to talk more about that in just a couple of minutes. Um, so here you, you got your schedule. 90 days, Monday through Friday, 500 contacts per week. Some days you're going to be making 70 contacts because you're going on an appointment. So Saturday morning is your makeup time. Start at 9 a.m. till noon, 1 p.m. until you finish your 500 contacts for the week. Minimum of 10 appointments set that you got to go on. You have to follow up with your leads obsessively. And I'm going to tell you what to do to follow up when you get a lead. But this is not instead of calling. Following up obsessively means you call until they answer, until you speak with them. Now you call once, they don't answer, you leave a voicemail, you wait a, a week, two weeks. No, that's not obsessive lead follow-up. So when you get a lead, 
set it aside. So, you know, you got this lead, you got to do something with it when you're done with your calls and you're going to send them a video message over the phone. You're going to record a quick video message, short. Nobody's going to sit and watch or like long drawn up. No, it's just, it was, it was a pleasure speaking with you today. I look forward to meeting with you in order to discuss how my aggressive marketing and real estate experience will help you get your home sold quickly and for a top market price. I had something like that on my lead letter. You could listen on YouTube and get transcribe. I'm not going to repeat. I don't have time. We already wasted time because of my internet here. So um, you're also, you're sending this short video message. You're going to text him the same thing. And this is, it is follow-up, but it's not a repeat instead of actually speaking with them. It's in addition to. You should also email them a lead letter that's going to say something like what I said to you uh, that you should say on the video. You're going to create an automated drip campaign for these leads. They're going to get an email from you every other day. Again, this is not instead of talking to them. There is no substitute for having these conversations. What are you going to say in, these, in this drip campaign? market stats, market information, mortgage rates, information about real estate. It could be once in a while a property you just listed or a property you just sold. You want to come across as the expert, as the resource. So that's what these emails need to be. Creating urgency. Speak to why they need to be selling right now and not waiting. Urgency. Why it would be a mistake to not hire you. Those are the things that you're gonna write the, on these emails. Um, post your successes and your daily results on social media. If you're, this is at the end of the day, I don't know when, this is at 10 p.m. because you're not, you're not opening any kind of social media throughout the day. But posting your successes and results, that's what's going to make an impact and influence people like, wow, this agent is working. They know what they're doing. They're getting results. That's what it's about. That's what people care about. That's why they're going to hire you. Saturdays and Sundays, you're going to make calls. I said Saturdays. I mentioned Sunday because one of my clients, she, we had a live, I had a live call with my clients before this webinar. She texted me right after. She said, I won't be able to be on the, the webinar today because I'm going to take a Facebook listing. She's going on a listing appointment to take the listing. This same client, two weeks ago, I think it was, she said on a Sunday, she decided to make calls. She said, you know, she didn't reach her goal during the week. So she was like, okay, it's Sunday. Let's go. I'm going to make phone calls. She got on the phone, set two for sale by owner appointments for Monday, went out on Monday and listed both of them. So if it's, if it ever crossed your mind, like is Sunday a good day to prospect? It's like, wow, well, I did a lot of prospecting on Sunday, my first two, two years in real estate, because I had no choice as it's late, like two appointments and two listings taken just like that. Go and Lily. Li go Lily. Who said that? Sylvia. <laughs> Sylvia, yeah, you know who I'm talking about. That's amazing. And then later that week, three days later, she listed an expired. Lily's on fire. All of you can get those same results. Absolutely, 100%. I want you to write this down because a lot of agents are very much into like using the talking about their stats and their market stats. I, I believe in using your successes in your favor, 100%. And at the same time, write this down, your company stats or your experience will not impress the seller. Your energy will. Your reputation needs to be with everyone you talk to. This is the hardest working real estate agent in this area. That's who you want to, that's what you want to be known as hardworking and experienced, but energy is everything. So when I say hardest working real estate agent in the area, that's who you are. 
you're not a community organizer, you know, organizing events. You're not a dog trainer. I mentioned this before. You know, so many real estate agents believe in like, oh, they got to build rapport with the seller. And, oh, I love your dog. And, oh, you like fishing. Oh, I love this. You're none of that. You are a professional, knowledgeable, hardworking real estate agent. That's what motivated sellers are looking for. They're not looking for a friend or anything else. When a motivated seller is looking for an aggressive agent, and that's who you need to be. Um, okay, let's see. I'm going to see if I have to rush through this because we got 20 minutes left. Your mindset must be. I think all of you know, I no doubt in my mind, mindset is everything. So what does your mindset need to be while you do all of this? And this is the last thought before we go to step two. You are at zero right now. I don't care if you've been in real estate for 20 minutes or 20 years. You are at zero. And it's now or never. That's it. It's now. If it's not now, when? You got to take action and you got to start right now. And your only goal, every contact you make, everyone you talk to, your goal is to set a listing appointment. It's not to get leads. It's not to make contacts, not to put in four hours, not three hours. Set a listing appointment that you can go out and talk to people in person and do a great listing presentation. Here's step number two infrastructure so who's gonna support everything you're doing this was another fascinating thing when i was talking to Freud. he said after what like 37 years ago when this guy got into real estate he starts door knocking he said from 6 a.m to 10 p.m i'm like uh can do, do you say 6 a.m to yeah 6 a.m to 10 p.m i took a half hour break i brought a sandwich sat under a tree ate my sandwich and kept going to the doors he said within one week, he, they had to hire a, like the broker. I mean, this guy didn't even speak English. So he's just speaking Spanish to people. Like this, this is a fascinating story, okay? This, his career is fascinating. So he, he didn't speak any English. So he would just knock on the door. I said, well, like, I guess you're just going to neighborhoods where people speak Spanish. He says, no, I, I go to wherever, whatever they speak. If, but I said, well, well, how do you talk to people? He said, no, I just learned to say what I need to say in English. He said, okay, what is it? What script are you using? Do you want to buy or sell? No, okay, next, that's it. Quiere uh, vender, comprar? No, okay, yeah, okay, that's it. Like, it's pretty easy, yeah? So within a week, they had to hire an assistant because he was getting so much business, he wasn't handling any business. He was just handing it to the broker because he didn't know how to do anything. So anyway, uh, when you start following the schedule I gave you, you're going to be in the same situation. You're going to have listings. You're going to start, you're going to have to do CMAs. You're going to have to do all, all of these. Well, you're not going to have to do all of those things. They're going to need to be done, but you're going to get somebody to do them for you. So you're going to hire a licensed negotiator assistant. You're not even going to negotiate contracts. You're just going to take lists. So obviously a licensed negotiator is going to negotiate contracts. They will do your CMAs. Initially, you just need one. Eventually, you're going to need more. They're going to handle customer service calls and they're going to handle inspections, appraisals, whatever, repairs, negotiations, all that kind of stuff. And even closings and going through documents with, uh, with, with clients for closing purposes. You're going to have a transaction coordinator. This person is going to handle your files from pending to close. You're not going to be doing that because that will totally distract you from your prospecting. You're going to have two great buyer's agents on a 50-50 split. Do not obsess over their productivity. you got two buyer's agents. You're going to be, all these listings are going to bring a ton of buyers. As you're prospecting, you're going to find buyers. Just let them do what they do. You focus on the big picture. If you get into the minutia or what they're doing, 
you get totally distracted from the big goal of 90 listings in 90 days. And write this down. I love this thought. Perfection is your enemy. It's not about perfection. Guess what? This is going to be messy. You're going to start taking listings. It's going to be this and that to do. It's going to be messy. And this is not about being perfect. This is about efficiency and profitability. That's what it's about. So stay focused. And then eventually, probably within a month or so, hire two ISAs. These are prospectors. That's all they do for eight hours a day. Their, the, their goal and their standard is the same as it is for you. Minimum of 10 contacts a day. Setting appointments is the goal. They, they are be setting two or three appointments a day for you. Yeah. And you're going to go the, take the listings. And if they're buyer, uh, buyer leads, then the buyer's agents are going to work with them. That's your infrastructure. Simple. That's it. All of the administrative stuff is going to be taken away. Step three, skills. One of my favorite conversations. Write this down. The script, knowing what to say and how to say it, okay? The scripts are tools for you. And tools are only as good as the craftsman that uses them. Think about that. What do you do with a script if you don't know how to deliver it? Not much, I can tell you that. Now, although skills is the third step here, and it's really important because you're in the business of communicating, skills are secondary to massive action. Secondary. When you take massive action, it will make up for a lack of skill any day, okay? Any day. But when you combine massive action with great skills, you become unstoppable. First skill that you need to master, the skill of prospecting, which means speaking with decision with a decision-making adult about buying or selling real estate. Second skill, handling objections. You need Am I the only one that can't hear Jackie? Uh-oh. Yes, I hear. Okay. I, I hear her. Okay. Okay, good. So somebody can't hear me. I'm getting nervous again. Something happening here again. <laughs> so uh, handling objections, listening to the objection, being able to respond appropriately and close for appointments and close for the signature. The skill of presenting. You can make great listening presentations. Deliver the information that shows this seller leaves no doubt that you are the best agent for the job. And if they don't hire you, they're making a mistake. And finally, the skill of closing, asking for and getting appointments and getting the signature. Your job is to in lead, right? Uh, for those of you who are my clients, I talk about this all the time. It's not about being pushy. It's leading people to take action. And people lead great leaders. They influence. They have influence. So I actually looked up the definition of an influencer. And I want you to write this down. I love this. An influencer has the ability to bring people around to their way of thinking without force or coercion while acknowledging their opinion. That's powerful. That's exactly what you're supposed to be doing on every conversation and every presentation. Jackie, could you just repeat that, please? An influencer has the ability to bring people around to their way of thinking without force or coercion while acknowledging their opinion. Isn't that awesome? I love that so much. Write this down. 7% of your communication, and communication is not what you say, it's what people hear, but I said, you know, scripts are tools. I mean, definitely important. The words you use, the scripts you use, they matter. They definitely matter. And yet 
only 7% of your communication comes from the words that you say. 38% from your tonality and 55% from your body language. Write this down. Sellers sense what you're saying based on how you say it. They sense, they get a feeling about what you're saying based on how you are saying it. Are you sending signals of weakness or strength? Sound conversational. I hear so many, oh, I don't like scripts. You know, this, I don't talk like that. The scripts are not me. Okay. <laughs> The, the, my scripts were me either. And now, like when I started in real estate, right? Everybody feels like that. It's like, it's a freaking script. Of course, it's not going to sound like you. What you don't like, it's not the script. The problem is sounding scripted. So you got to work on these scripts. I gave you the schedule, like what you're going to do to practice and improve your skills and your and the delivery of your scripts so you can sound conversational because the more scripted you sound, the worst your results will be. That's the problem, it's sounding scripted. The more conversational you sound, the better your results will be. And that's gonna come with time on task, time on task. What task? Practicing and prospecting. That's what's gonna get you there. So when you're using these scripts, who you're being and how you sound, sound confident. You got to speak confidently. Nobody wants to list their house with someone's like is unsure of what they're doing. Aggressive, passionate, and knowledgeable. No, oh, but I'm brand new to real estate. Like what knowledge? Learn fast. You have no time to waste. Okay, 90 listings in 90 days is not about wasting time. Enthusiasm and passion also makes up for a lack of skill. Just like massive action makes up for a lack of skill. So take massive action with a lot of en enthusiasm, energy, and passion until you start improving your skills. Remember, Every conversation, whether you're prospecting or presenting, you got to remember this. This is like a mantra for you. What's in it for them? It needs to be about value to them, not about you. Ah, yeah, you want the listing. Yeah, you, you need money to pay your bills, this and that. But if you're focused on you without providing value, you sound desperate, pushy. And that's repelling to people. What's in it for them? People pay for perceived value. That's why they're going to list with you. That's why they're going to hire you. That's why they're going to pay you a commission. Also, we're getting close to the end. So keep writing. People make decisions when they're excited about the future. This is why high energy, enthusiasm, being passionate is so important because they're going to decide to list with you when they're excited about what you can do for them. They're not going to get excited about what you can do for them if you're not excited about what you can do for them. So it starts with you. Mindset. I feel like I say this on almost every webinar. Bombard your brain with powerful, positive, motivational, inspirational ideas 24 seven 90 listings in 90 days that it's not going to happen to a weak-minded person that's just fearful and have doubts and are just talking to negative people all day and complaining no it's not gonna happen and so you you gotta take the initiative to put great stuff in cut off all negative people People that don't think it's possible and they're all like, you know, the naysayers out, there's plenty of them. That's like, unfortunately, the majority of people we come across every day, you don't have, you don't have time for that. You don't want to waste your energy on that. 
you were, you work way too hard to strengthen your mindset, improve your skills, taking action to, to let somebody trash your energy and your mindset, your income will reflect your beliefs. This is why bombarding your brain with power, positive motivation, traditional ideas 24 seven is critical. There will be little or no time for you to do anything else. And that's okay. 90 listings in 90 days, which is if we think about the, the Monday through Friday, blah, blah, blah. It's like four and a half months, maybe 90 listings. Even if not all of them sold, but in most of your markets, yeah, you take a listing unless it's like a ridiculous price, which I trust you're not going to do that. It will sell. Even if only 80 sold times your average commission, figure that out real quick. Let's say your average commission is $10,000, 80 sales in the next four and a half months. Yeah, you're not going to have time for anything else. And it's okay. And it will get easier. Now, once you complete your 90 day challenge, leverage your results through a targeted email campaign. Let the world know what you've done. All the homes that you've sold, list to sales price ratio, average days on market, all your great stats, leverage it through an email campaign and social media posts. Get reviews from every one of your happy clients on as many real estate websites as you possibly can. And this is a mindset thought, and then I'm going to close with two quotes for you. One of the worst things that you can do to your mindset is say you're going to do something and then not do it. So if you're not going to do it, don't say you're going to do it. Okay? It's as simple as that. You don't have to, you don't have to set this as a goal. If, if it's not your goal, then that's fine. You know, trust you learned something here and just go do whatever you do. But if you say you're going to do it and you set as a goal, follow through all the way. This is one of the most powerful things you can do. Your word is law to you. When something comes out of your mouth, when you commit to something, you do it. It's not about any, anybody else. This is about you being able to count on you. Two quotes to close. You can't have a million dollar dream on a minimum wage work ethic. Mm. Say that again, that was powerful. You can't have, I know I love it too. You can't have a million dollar dream on a minimum wage work ethic. And one of my favorite quotes lately, there is no such thing as something for nothing. Everything, including your success, has a price to be paid. Napoleon Hill, the author of Think and Grow Great. Thank you for being here, everyone. I trust you are going to accept the challenge and let me know how amazing you're doing. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to make you a fortune. And it's going to give you a lot of personal power. And it gets easy as you go.